called dispatchers. And in this program, what they have done is that they have secretly videotaped some of our own brothers and sisters, some of the scholars and du'at and students of knowledge. They have secretly videotaped uh, certain lectures that they gave and cut and pasted certain things that they said in order to make them appear in a very negative, in a very evil light. And really this is very distressing uh, news to hear because now is not the time we need to get more and more attention, negative attention towards the Muslims. Such an attitude is a very unhealthy attitude. And what really and truly strikes me uh, about this particular program, they had a secret, you know, quote unquote reporter, I means probably somebody who looks Asian, Muslim, whatnot, who were going into the mosque and recording these things privately. And they spent months investigating specific, uh, you know, scholars and specific uh, du'at. And they then snippeted, cut and pasted bits and pieces of the many, many, many talks that they gave. And they took, obviously, anything that they didn't like. Now, a number of things to be pointed out here. Firstly, it is really distressing that all of the good that they must have heard, without a doubt, being in a masjid for so many months, and filming so many khutbas and doing secretly, private camera, how much good did they hear? How much did they hear that the people, the ulama, the shaykhs are telling the people, be charitable, be good, you know, love Allah and His Messenger, come close to Allah, be religious, be spiritual, you know, be good to your neighbors, give it out to Islam. How much message they also must have heard about being good citizens of this country as well. As me and you both know, there are hardly any people out there that are really and truly militant. These are such a small minority among us. The vast majority of Muslims, the vast majority of people understand that we are citizens of this country, even if we disagree with certain foreign policies. That doesn't mean that we do anything to the people of this country. We are citizens and we are Muslims. They must have heard this message, must have without a doubt, along with all of the good. For them to ignore all of this good and take 5, 10, 15 second clips, this shows a, a, an evil in the heart in all honesty. To ignore all of the good that must have come from the tongues of our brothers in Islam and to pick and choose these bits. This shows something very problematic and, and, and evil in the hearts. The second thing is that they are labeling this group of people with a label. And they are telling as if the other Muslims, oh you must disassociate yourself from this group of people. And they have chosen this label, they call it Wahhabi, or they call it Salafi. And they say this is what the Wahhabis teach, this is what the Salafis teach. Now if you look at what they are teaching and what they are saying, much of it is something which is general to Islam. Okay, some other brother says something about homosexuality. He doesn't like homosexuality. Is homosexuality a sin only to this one group in Islam that they have invented Wahhabis? No Muslim calls himself a Wahhabi. Is this thing only something negative to this one group that they will reject and, and ignore all the other groups? Similarly, other statements that were made, nothing is intrinsically to one particular group. Most of it is general Islamic statements. Some of them are ayat and ahadith that they have again cut and pasted. Ayat and ahadith. Only. They have cut and pasted and said this is coming from a Wahhabi uh, training and a Wahhabi seminary. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, look beyond the, 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 the stereotype. Look beyond what exactly is being planned. What is being planned is to cut and break the Muslim community. No doubt we are different groups. No doubt there are various splinter groups amongst us. But to discuss the differences of these groups, there is a time and place amongst the Muslims. We don't need to get the non-Muslims involved in this dirty baggage between this group and that group. This is a problem that we are facing as a Muslim. No doubt there are groups out there. No doubt we differ on theology and issues. Inshallah, in contrast to the non-Muslims, we are one Ummah, we are Muslims. Amongst ourselves, we can discuss and fine-tune in detail, no problem. But to take one group and label it, label it with an invented label. This label of Wahhabi is an invented label. And then say, oh, this is all coming from this group. What do you think they're trying to do? They're trying to divide and conquer. They're trying to cut and break the Ummah and say, okay, this is one group called the Wahhabis. What happens? Those who don't like this label, don't call themselves this label, nobody does. But I'm saying the groups that don't even like, for example, the theology of this group, of this group, they will say, okay, this, this anger is directed toward these Wahhabis. That's fine, let them do that. I'm not going to support my fellow Muslims in Islam. But you all realize, you all know the story of the three bulls, the red, the white, and the, uh, the black bull. All of you know the story that when an enemy came, a, a tiger came to attack, it couldn't attack all three bulls together. It went to the white bull and the red bull and spoke against the black bull and said, Oh, you know, this black bull is evil, this black bull is, evil. is that? Let me take the black bull first. And you guys, I won't harm you guys. So it took the black bull and killed it individually and the other two watched. And then it came to the red bull and it told the red bull you know black and white were the two evil colors let me just take the white one and i'll leave you alone and so it then took the wh white bull and the red bull was left standing by itself now that it had taken both of these and only the red was it uh, was, was left what do you think happened obviously it went to 
uh, killed the Red Bull and the Red Bull said, there is no point defending myself, I died the day I didn't defend the Black Bull. I should have defended the Black Bull initially. There is no point now defending myself and it too ended up dying. So what, this is a tactic that is being used. Look at, as I said, the evil intentions of ignoring all the good and concentrating on the evil. And now look, taking general things in Islam. We believe homosexuality is a sin. It is a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going to do something against homosexuals? No, we're not. This is not our country or our land. But we're allowed to speak against it, are we not? Our country has promised us the right of freedom of speech. If you think homosexuality is permissible, you go and say that. I think it is a sin. Allow me the right to say that. Allow me the right to say that this is an aberration against God. So what if we say it? Does this mean we're inciting violence? Inciting people to do anything? No. We believe homosexuality is a sin. We also believe premarital sex is a sin. We believe extramarital sex is a sin. What is the problem in saying this that they have to pinpoint? And subhanAllah, the issue of homosexuality, is this something even only Islam says is a sin? Every single Orthodox Christian, Orthodox Jew believes the same thing. Are they spreading hatred and violence and terror? Look at the double standards, look at, look through the hype and don't be taken in by this. All that they have mentioned against these particular brothers in Islam, perhaps some of it was said in an unwise manner, perhaps it was a bit harsh, but none of these brothers, we know them individually, none of these brothers is calling to violence, none of them is inciting a Muslim to lift a finger against a non-Muslim or a Muslim, none of them is doing it. So to take these brothers and put them in a militant or evil light, and knowing them, the hype that is around Islam, this is a very, very unwise move. And we as Muslims need to do something about it. Obviously in a wise manner as well. So what I encourage all of you to do, all of you, don't just sit there and do nothing. What I encourage all of you to do, is in the strongest but firm and polite terms, write letters and call up uh, this particular channel, channel 4. Uh, you can get the number from the internet, from the web. I'm sure the other, there's a mass email being circulated that has the numbers. Write Write and call, do both of them, and request politely, first express your anger and outrage that this is not the time that this show needs to be shown, this is not the time to do it, there's already enough hostility. Secondly, you can also express your outrage at the double standards that there are other religions that say many of these things as well, against homosexuals, against this and that. Other religions think they have an identity which is more important than a nationalistic identity. Yes, we are Muslims first and foremost, and then we are Pakistani, Arab, uh, British, American, this is secondary, no doubt we are Muslim first and last because it is Allah who created us Allah who will take our soul as for nationalities they come and go okay well, one, one year a country is powerful the next year it goes up and down how many years has a country been around it hasn't been around for eternity nationalities come and go we are loyal to our countries in so far as it doesn't conflict with our religion of Islam so express this outrage why are you pinpointing and targeting us when there are other religions who also say the same thing also express your outrage at picking this one a fabricated group, it doesn't exist, there is no Muslim on the face of this earth who calls himself a Wahhabi. And then taking commands and tenets that are general to all Muslims. All Muslims believe in, in, in what these brothers said. It's not just this particular group and then saying, it, oh this is Wahhabi. You know what's going to happen? What their tactic is, is that somebody reads this and he goes, you know, I don't want to be associated with this group. Let me say homosexuality is allowed in Islam. This is the, the net result is that they want you to disassociate from a concept that is Islamic by inventing a name that has nothing to do with Islam, this name of Wahhabism. Please, brothers and sisters, look through this, okay, and understand what is going on. Express politely and yet firmly. Politely, obviously, goes without saying. Uh, and also firmly that you are disappointed in the show, and if they cannot air, that would be great, but uh, perhaps that would not work. At least tell them, fine, have a documentary, have an extra, let us speak as well. Hear our voices. Get these people whom they secretly videotape, and cut and paste to 10, 10, 10 seconds, get them in your studios and interview them an hour long. The same people whom you videotaped, interview them. And ask them point blank, what did you say, why did you say it? So that they can put it in context. You know when you don't hear the entire context, you cut and paste, what's going to happen? Somebody will say, and this is a, you know, a joke that is said in an Islamic circle, somebody will say, Allah has prohibited us to pray. Akhi, what is your evidence? How can you say this? Did you not hear Allah says in the Quran, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Full stop. Woe to those who pray. This is a verse in the Quran, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Woe to those who pray. And so if they cut only this verse, and they mention it, what will happen? You've destroyed the whole meaning. Then Allah goes on and He says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who are lazy in their prayer. Not all people who pray, only one category amongst them. So my dear brothers and sisters, what they've done, as I said, they've taken these snippets, cut and paste of these brothers, our friends in Islam, and they are portraying them in a negative and a bad light. I ask and I urge all of you,